Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how we can create stylized crystals. In a recent video I was printing out some various different things to test out some filament, and uh, one of the things I was printing out was this crystal set, and I thought it'd be really cool just to go through how we can make some stylized crystals, because while this was very basic and just a quick test, I actually think that making stylized crystals can really enhance a design if you do it right. For example, this is a very basic sci-fi gun that I threw together that has a crystal as part of its focal mechanism and it just looks really boring when it is an exact crystal. Whereas if we get rid of that and bring in a more stylized crystal, I think you'll agree that looks way more fun, it's going to be more interesting to look at and if this is for 3D printing it's going to be way more interesting to paint. So let's come into a new Blender document. Let's just delete that object out and we'll start having a look at how we can make things like crystals. Now, I probably shouldn't go anywhere before actually mentioning that there's a very quick way of getting things like gemstones. If you do want something that's more idealised, if you go to Edit and Preferences and then you'll need to come to Get Extensions and type in Extra and then you'll need to install this Extra Mesh Objects. There'll be an Install button for you there. I've already installed it and then go to add-ons and then type in extra and then you'll have this extra mesh object. Without it, if you press shift and A, you get very few mesh options here. In fact, you won't even have quad sphere because I've got that because I've got machine tools. Whereas if you've enabled that, you get all these extra options and that includes this diamonds option and that has a range of different diamonds. For example, gemstones and you can change everything, for example, the segments and things like that. And then you'll have other options as well. Let's just bring in a brilliant diamond. And again, you can change a lot of things here, like the crown height and various other bits like that. So it's up to you, but this will create something that is perfect. And I find that a little bit dull. Great for if you want to put things on rings. Not so great for something that's maybe a little bit more random. So let's start with the basics. I normally use a cylinder for this and I'll generally bring that down to somewhere in the region of 8 vertices and I find that a very good starting point. We can S and Z to create that a little bit longer. Control and A to apply the scale because we're going to be beveling this. Go into edge mode. You won't have this option unless you've got machine tools. Machine tools is a paid for add-on. I am going to mention some paid for add-ons during this but I'll mention plenty of free tools as well, but in this instance that pie menu just makes it easier for you to see what I'm doing and what mode I'm in. I'm going to control and B and this will overlap horribly, so we're just going to press C to clamp it and then click. Now if you do have machine tools and you've got the cleanup option added, this is really quick. You can just press 3 and that's going to say that it's deleted a number of vertices. What we're going to do is we'll do the same thing on the bottom, that's control and B and then we'll see what that has just done. So if I go into vertex mode and select here, you'll notice that there is a lot of vertices on top of each other. That's because we've just brought all of these together with that bevel and then clamped them and they're basically just sitting there on top of each other. Now, the quickest way to fix that is with that mesh cleanup as far as I'm concerned, but you can just A, M, and then merge by distance. And while it takes a little bit longer, it is free. You can do that with Blender as it is, whereas machine tools you need to pay $5 for, though it's got a lot of great tools. I really think it's worth it, but it's definitely not a requirement. Now at this point, this looks fairly crystal-like, but if we come back to this gun, as we said, it looks fairly boring in comparison to that. Also, it's not really very realistic. While crystals can form in this perfect shape, it really requires well, pretty much perfect conditions for that to happen. And even in those perfect conditions, crystals are generally formed with some sort of fluids. And if we have a look at these huge gypsum crystals that were formed in this cave in Mexico, even then they're not perfect. In fact, thinking about it, I've got some amethyst downstairs. Let me just grab a quick picture or a video of that amethyst. And you can see these crystals are far from perfect. So having them in this really boring geometry is just a little dull. And most of the time it actually stops people recognizing this as a crystal form. So we wanna do something different to it. So let's start making this more interesting. And the first thing we can do is Alt select all of these edges and then we can just S to sort of size these up a little bit. That's gonna help make this a little bit more interesting straight off to begin with. And then we want to cut off or start removing some of these corners. 
Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. We're going to go through them one at a time. I'm going to start with some free methods and then get on to the paid for methods, though I'll have to alternate a little bit through just because of the workflow we're going through. So the first thing we'll do is actually just try to cut some of these off using the knife tool. So what I'm going to do is press K to activate the knife tool. You can see we get this knife icon and then I can click, click here and then press space. Notice there's going to be a problem here and that is because we haven't actually cut all the way through. Now the reason for that is that we haven't told it to cut all the way through. So I'm just going to press K again after I'm doing that, click and then I'm going to press C and then click and then space and that's cut all the way through and it does that exactly at the angle that we were looking at. Now with this done, if we just go into vertex mode, we need to actually get rid of this. There's a couple of ways of doing this. One, we could delete that vertex out and then select all of our vertices and then press F and then we've got that as a face. The other option, if we just do the same thing over here, so that's K there, C, click space, is that we can just select this vertex come to this vertex and then if you've got machine tools which is that paid for add-on that costs like five dollars we can just hit one to then merge at last or if you want to you can click shift click M merge at last again it doesn't take a huge amount of time and if we go into edge mode again you just hit tab and two we can come to this and press Control and X to dissolve that out and we've got a quad there that's perfectly flat so that's our first option is using the knife tool. Now, if you don't like some of this shaping, we can always move it around. Let's go into vertex mode and I can hit GG to move along this to make it bigger or smaller. But you'll notice if I want to go here, this starts to have a bit of a problem. All you need to do is press C while the vertex is on the line that you want to follow. And you can start bringing that along even further than it would allow you to go initially. So we can come to somewhere like there. The other thing we could do is start using some booleans. Now, we need a separate object for this. So if I shift and A, mesh and bring in a cube, let's S to scale that up and then just start G and then come to somewhere useful. We can R to rotate it, get it in the sort of correct place that we want. And then we can either do this manually, which would be to click here, click on our modifier, add modifier and type in boolean. We want to do a difference boolean click on this object and then click it and then H and you can see we've booleaned that out. The other option which is vastly faster, let's go to the point where we don't have that at all, is if we edit preferences and then we're going to get extensions and we're going to type in ball and we want ball tool, install it, go to add on, type in ball and once again activate it and then you can click on the object that you want to be your cutter which will be the bit that's removing from the other object shift click on the object you want to remove it from and then press control and then minus on your number pad as long as you've got a number pad and then we can just click here and H to hide it. So booleans are a really quick way of doing this but they get a bit tedious because you've got to keep creating all of these cubes and well it just gets annoying but it is there and they are free. The other option which I find the preferable option is to use an add-on called nSolve now this is a paid for add-on, I'll put a link to everything that I'm discussing in the description here, including these paid for add-ons, and I'll put the links to some playlists that have those add-ons in as well, just in case you're interested in them, because they all have loads of other functions, it's not just doing this. But all we're going to do once it's installed is go into edit mode and press Alt and 4, and I want to have nSolve, and we're going to use this tool here, which is the mesh cut, and effectively that allows me to do that and then let go and it's cut through it. It basically does that whole process that we did here, but in many, many less clicks. Let's come down to the bottom. We'll do exactly the same. This time I'm gonna do it on this side and I'm gonna click there, drag, and you'll notice this is gonna be a problem because it's gonna cut the wrong side. Well, actually, all you do is you click and then you're gonna press F. Notice at the bottom, it tells you what your options are. So I'm gonna press F to flip direction. There we go and we're done. This also has a huge range of other functions as well. Again, they're all talked about in the playlist and this isn't even all of them. Let's come out of that and we'll talk about another option as well. I think for making crystals, that is my favourite. I think it is the most efficient. Now, one thing that someone might look at doing, which I would recommend against, let's come down here, is going into vertex mode and then clicking, let's say, a couple of vertices 
and then pressing Control, Shift, and B, and that allows you to bevel your vertices. Now, this doesn't cause too many issues here, but it can end up with a non-perfectly flat face. I think here we're going to end up mostly all right, but we can end up with some problems. Let's see if we can find some problems. So if we do it, let's say here, Control, Shift, and B, and drag to there, we get this slight edge. This is going to be very difficult to see on YouTube. We've got a slight discoloration here that says that this isn't perfectly flat. If we come here we can see that there's a slight angle to it. It's very slight but it is there so this isn't actually a flat face. Now that causes some problems for us. Now if you want to make sure that you can see it in this way I have my cavity turned on which if you go to shading I'm in a matte cap you can do this in studio as well um, but either way come to cavity, make sure that's ticked on, turn type to both, and then I'll copy these settings. I've got a whole video on my viewport settings, so if you like the fact that, that my active edge is blue, and then other previously clicked and selected edges are green, and it does the same with faces as well, then feel free to have a look at that video. Again, everything there is free, so it's just modifying some settings. But we're gonna need to fix this. Now, there's a few options of how to fix this. Again, one free, one paid for. Unfortunately, the paid for version is one of the more expensive Blender add-ons. It has a lot of really, really powerful tools, but again, paid for. So we're gonna go into vertex mode, and the free version is using something called loop tools. Go to edit preferences, again, get extensions, type in loop, install loop tools, go to add-ons, activate it, and then in your end panel, you're gonna have an option called edit, you're probably gonna have less options here than I do, and that will have loop tools, or alternatively, if you don't want to keep that open, you can just select your vertices that you're interested in, right click, and then loop tools will be just there, and you can click flatten. Now, the problem with this is, you'll notice we've got some issues here with the way it's flattened it, so that's gonna be a problem, and to fix that, we can come here and M and then at first, but then that now has slightly un flattened this edge, so that's a bit of a problem. Or if we come down here and do the same, let's control shift and B and do something similar. And again, if I select these and then right click loop tools and flatten, it's gonna start distorting the edges or faces, I should say, around it. That hasn't shown up that obviously. In fact, let's do this over here. Let's get rid of that difference Boolean. And then if we come somewhere, I don't know, here, control shift and B, you can see this sort of faux edge. You can see the discoloration that's just there. Let's get rid of that so you can just about see it. But if I start clicking on these vertices, right click, loop tools, and flatten, again, we're gonna get this problem. And it's also, if you can just see here, you can see some slight lines. Again, this will depend on how YouTube really shows this up, but there's a line there and a line there that isn't quite perfect. In fact, if I A and press Control and T to triangulate, you can see that's where these edges are. This edge here, and this edge here. Again, it's very, very faint, but the cavity is allowing me to see that. And that's because to flatten this, it distorts the faces around it, and again, you've got this problem here. So instead, we want something that's gonna be a better option. It also allows us to do some really cool things, like if I wanted to get that and that, and then we'll merge these at the center. I'm gonna use machine tools for this. You can use standard merge at center. You can see we've got this massive distortion here and here, but this would be really nice to create an interesting shape to our crystal, but we've got these unflattened edges and we're gonna have problems with that. Let's just go back and we'll come to talk about that in a second, but let's have a look at this one and our option of what we could do instead. So if we click, click and click, notice I've selected three of the vertices, you can see that fold there if I come here really clearly. What we wanna do is tell Blender to work just off of, let's say, three vertices, and those are the ones that we want to be flat. In fact, that might not be possible, we might have to do those three, okay? So what we're telling Blender to do is to treat it as if there's an edge here, so as if I went J, and then to flatten off of this face. And to do that, we're gonna use this add-on called Mesh Machine. Now, Machine Tools is the one that I mentioned earlier, it's only $5, 
Mesh Machine is more expensive. It has some really complex tools that do some fantastic stuff that you just can't really do without it, including being able to take a bevel and then rechange that bevel. But either way, one of its tools is to flatten. And that, if I select here and then press Y and then click flatten, you can see that it has flattened it off of that edge and it does that without distorting the other faces. It's really powerful. I wonder if I could do it off of these three, Y and flatten. Yeah, I can. And it's just drawn this vertex upwards. So you can see how amazingly powerful that is. And that's just one of the tools. Again, there's a link in the description. Now there are limits to this, I think, because it should work off quads. That's what it's designed to work off. For example, if I did this and then merged in the center, these are not quads. This face is not a quad. So it might have issues if I select there, there, and there, and then Y, and then flatten. Well, actually, no, it's done that really well. So notice it's recognized that this face is flat, and these faces around it are flat, and not try to mess those up. Whereas this one, which was already not flat, it went, well, I don't really care. Let's go into vertex mode and we can select, let's say there, there, and there, and then Y, and then flatten again. And it's flattened that really nicely as well. So this is a really powerful tool that allows you to sort these edges out and make this really cool distorted crystal. Now, I still maintain that the most powerful thing here for these crystalline faces is to use Alt 4 and then our Nsolve paid for add-on and just cut, that's F to flip, these different faces out. I think as soon as you start doing this, you very quickly get into some really interesting crystalline forms, which I think is going to look way more natural and interesting to look at. So if you're only going to get one add-on, to help you make crystals, if you decide that you want to make crystals. For me, it's this Nsolve add-on, and it also has loads of other functions, so do feel free to check out that playlist. But I just think that this is more beneficial than any other single add-on, specifically for making crystals. Now, if you do want the add-on that I would say is the most powerful out of all of them, I would probably say that it is Mesh Machine. That has some incredible utility to it, but Again, it is the most expensive. So hopefully you found that interesting. A quick little talk about how we can make some really funky crystal shapes, the different options that are available to us, some free, some paid for, and hopefully that gives you something to go away and explore. Have a great day, guys.